Welcome to the Calyrex Game Corner's Pokemon D&D campaign, featuring Jacob as Schmidt with his far-fetched Quacko, Melissa as Cindy with her Vulpix Soul Eater, Grace as Elodie with her Milsery Cabbage, and CJ as Gimli with his Roggenrola Trevor. My name is Rich, and I'm the Game Master, and this is Dunsparce and Drampa. Where last we left the party, you finally made your way through with the Scorching Heat Wave to the blustery northern treetop city of Fortree, thanks to the help of a new friend, Sam. You've brought your weakened allies and newly acquired party members to the Pokemon Center for Healing, and now we have some time amongst ourselves. It's early evening in Fortree City. It's about 5 p.m. It's still the same day as when we started the adventure. Kind of crazy to think about. You've only been around for a few hours. Uh, the sky is gradually tinting orange as the sun begins its descent down the horizon. Locals and travelers are scooting about, wrapping up their errands and checking in with friends and family. So as you arrived, or I suppose as you're exiting the Pokemon Center, Sam kind of gestures. She's like, well, we got some time on our hands. And she she points to uh, the southwest, which is directly pretty much south from where you are. There's a large tree house with an open round ceiling. And there's looks like dozens and dozens of bird Pokemon that are roosting in it. And there's a big sign. It says FCPS. Sam gestures to that and she says, well, that's the Fortree City Postal Service. If you feel like you got to send any messages to your friends back home, let them know what happened today. Might be a good place to stop by. She gestures in a different direction over to the north. There's a residential area. There's one treehouse that stands out among the rest. It has a large round door made of a darker wood compared to the rest of the trees. She says, uh, those kids in the Pokemon Center were talking about the, the witch. And some people seem to think that she knows what's going on with the heat wave. And other people are saying that it's just a bunch of nonsense. I believe she lives over there. If you want to pop in, ask some questions. Uh, she gestures over to the southeast corner of town. It's the busiest part of town at this time of day. There's a large building that appears to be a market that's propped up by four of the largest trees in town. Sam says, if you want to do some shopping, now's a great time. Pick up some supplies that we might have lost on our journey up on the route. She gestures to the northeast corner. There's a large metal modern building compared to the rest of Fortree with wild foliage growing out through the walls and through the ceiling. It has large glass windows, and people appear to be milling about at work inside. There's a wooden sign above the door that reads, Rite of Passage, Fortree. Sam gestures over there, and she says, It seems like they do a bunch of research there. It seems like it's, it's a study organization, and a bunch of chains have started popping up all over Hoenn. Uh, they tend to study Pokemon and their techniques and how they evolve, so if, if you have any questions, I'm sure that'd be a great place to check out. Absolutely. Only a couple more things Sam identifies to the game. In the center of town, within a single gargantuan tree, this ancient old growth, is the Fortree City Gym. There's these big, giant wind turbines that spin above the thick canopy. Sam gestures over there and she says, that's the gym. Not sure if they're taking challengers right now, but if you haven't already done so, that might be a good time to pick up your Hoenn Region trainer's license. And then right outside from where you're standing, if you just turn to the right, there's a sign that reads Route 119 with an arrow, and it says Weather Institute ahead. With all that information, what would the game like to do? Well, we haven't gotten registered. Oh, did, we, did we get registered completely? I don't, I don't recall. Not for the, the gym challenges. Gym challenges. We could go to the post office and send letters to our families. Yeah, I'm good with doing that first. Yeah, we could do that first and then go get our licenses, yeah. I feel like even though Cindy hopes to get to her grandparents' farm at some point, she wants to send a letter anyway, just in case it takes her longer to get there than however long a letter takes to send. So um, Schmidt is playing the, uh, you know what I'm trying to say. I don't. No. Theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Does the Schmidt pack have a theme song now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, the the Motley Crew? Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Motley yeah. Crew. Can, can oh. we... Can Schmidt give us a little rendition? That song dropped or, the same day as. <laughs> yeah, give us a little, give us a little beat. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Molly Crew, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love the idea that, like, now that the Schmidt pack has been established, Schmidt's like, 
this is our theme song and like without the context of the earth band he's thinking like we're a motley crew <laughs> you know sam says yeah that sounds like a really good idea uh i'm you've only been gone for a day but i'm sure your family would like to know what's going on maybe they've heard on the news that there's been some sort of event in lily cove so you all approach the uh fortress city postal service big glass doors slide open and it seems like there's no people around there's just hmm. birds just a whole bunch of birds. There's some shelving with envelopes and stationery and packages. And at the front desk, there is a single Murkrow wearing a little hat. Murkrow's already wearing a hat, of course, but it has like an extra hat on its hat. <laughs> it's just got two hats. It's a little like white and red hat. Looks very official. As you come in, it just squawks at you. And what do you do? Murkrow two hats. Okay, there we go. Just writing down notes. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just gotta save this note real quick. On, let me make a note of that. Okay. Two hats, very important. Yes, I'm gonna start writing a private letter to my my wife back home. So excuse me while I type a bunch of words in my DM chat. Sure. So to do so, you're gonna have to select some stationery. There's all True. sorts of varieties. Is there anything in particular that you're looking for? I mean, I'm a pretty simple guy, so my wife wouldn't be surprised if I just sent her home something like. Just like, wow, he found a piece of paper. That's impressive. He wrote a letter. Amazing. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so Cindy would probably pick out like the brightest colored, funnest pattern paper and envelope she can find and write a ridiculous letter that's like, I hope you're doing well. I really hope everything's fine. Trying not to freak out while freaking out, basically. Okay, great. Does it uh, cost anything to send a letter? It does. Um, you can see that where this Mirko is perched, there's a little sign below that has a listing of all the prices. And it seems to be dependent on where you're sending it, how fast the service is, and what kind of like stationary envelope you pick up. The flat okay. fee for like the most basic um, domestic mail is five Poké Dollars. And then it just kind of goes up from there depending on like what you're doing. So like basic to Kalos. Sure. Yeah, you'll see if, if you just wanted um, international delivery on just a basic parcel, basic speed, it is just 12 Poké Dollars. Okay, that's fine. You can do that. And who are you writing to? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out if it's more important to send a note to my family or to my boss that I might <laughs> not be back for a while. <laughs> uh, you could send both. They cost more money, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell your family to tell your boss. That's what I was thinking. I was like, let's just make the most mileage out of this and just tell my family to tell my boss. I think that's what we'll do. I'll send I'll send um I'll send a letter to my family. All right. That leaves it just uh just for Schmidt. Are you gonna be writing any letters? I know you wanted to see if you could somehow call your mother. Well, if you wanna write or send anything or any you know, could be a character we haven't met yet, even if you wanna write a letter to someone or just hold off. Uh just hold off for now. Well. Cool. Is, are you doing anything while um, your new friends are writing their letters? Are you just kind of looking um, around? Or are you just interacting with something? Just coming up with catchphrases for everyone in the Schmidt pack. Cool. Any progress so far or no? Schmidt's catchphrase is it's Schmidt time. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. Classic. That's all I got so far. Okay, good, good, good. Genius. Creative genius, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So all of you write your letters, um, you seal them up, you, you've all selected the basic kind of stuff, except for Cindy. And you notice that under the Murkrow, by the sign for the pricing, there is like a single like mail drop. It's like a little shoot. One by one, your letter to Murkrow, and Murkrow looks at it and goes, Wah! and a little sign above it lights up. For Gimli, mm -hmm. it says 12 Poké Dollars. Will you pay this Murkrow the 12 Poké Dollars? Absolutely. Murko receives your 12 Poké Dollars. Be sure to mark it off the sheet. And Murko drops into the slot. And for some reason, the, the slot just like knows what region it's destined to. And there's like eight different paths on the chute where the mail slides down. And it goes into a particular one that leads to a bunch of Starly and a couple Staravia and like two Staraptor. They all kind of peek at the envelope and a Starly picks it up and flies out of the building. A very similar process happens with Elodie. Merker looks at it and goes, Rah! and a sign lights up that says 12 Poké Dollars. Do you pay this? Yeah, I'm going to pay the money. Murkro drops your letter in the chute. It goes into a section that is populated by little red birds and a couple medium sized red birds and a big red bird. You recognize this to be the Talon Flame line. It is picked up by a Fletchling who puts it in its little mailbag and flies through the roof. 
Last but not least, it's Cindy. You got some special stationery, so Mercro Squacks, and then 15 Poke Dollars on the sign above. Do you pay this? It's 15, even though it's a uh, local. It's local, but you got some fancy stationery. I got stationery. the fancy stuff. Yep. 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 Yeah, I was just making check. Uh, okay. Yeah, I pay Sufficient. it. Excellent. And I'm assuming you aren't going to expedite because it's kind of no point because it should probably get there in a day. It's right around the corner. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right around the corner for a bird, not yeah, for me. A bird can get there really quickly. So there's uh, a couple various sized little little bluebirds. What you recognize as a tail picks up your envelope, not even in a bag. It just kind of picks it up in its talons and it flies off. Sam was just sitting on a bench, just kind of like fiddling with her gadgets. It looks like she had a screwdriver to some sort of like a watch, maybe, or maybe it's a communication device. She was fiddling with it, didn't seem to make any progress, and she says, great, y'all are done here? I believe so. Great, where would you like to go next? <laughs> Gotta go uh, get registered. Yeah, let's get some trainer licenses. Okay, so you walk over to this gym, and right as you're about to enter the Fortree City gym, the doors open, probably like too soon for them to have been triggered by you, and out steps a man in khaki shorts who is shirtless. He's got blue gelled hair. And he's accompanied by two little blue serpent Pokemon. And he says, power, yes, success, we win, we did it, feather badge, ours, let's go. And he just kind of like pushes past you guys. And he seems to be very happy. And as he's walking, he's like punching the air. And his little Pokemon friends are going, meh, meh, meh. They're just cheering in rhythm with his shouts. So you are just going to say hi. I, do you say hi to him? Yeah, I'm going to little wave for sure. Let me see something real quick roll to perceive me yeah he just yeah. doesn't even notice he doesn't even care about you guys <laughs> like who knows if he even recognized you from before he's just yeah. power success <laughs> onwards and um he's just mobbing he does it seems like he's just walking like straight into the growth which is funny because you have to step down a ladder to get to this building um because all the walkways are elevated in the treetops and he's just like walking under the walkways like into the jungle like who knows where this guy's going you all enter the fortress city gym there's a gentleman, he's got a funky mustache. He's in some sort of uniform that looks kind of sporty, but also kind of formal. You assume it's kind of like the, the Hoenn-looking uniform for, for gym personnel. And he waves over to you all. He says, uh, I, we're closed for the day. We had our last entrance just now. Can I help you? We would like um, to get registered for the gym challenge, please. He looks at all of you and says, oh, sure, yeah, I can get you registered now. We're just not going to take any more challengers until tomorrow. Uh, who wants to come up first? I'll do it. Right. I will. Okay. <laughs> As the leader. <laughs> As the leader. This gentleman uh, looks you up and down. He says, very well. Uh, I can imagine it happens exactly like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, the family started to say something, and then Schmidt just, like, cut in. I will. Like, right in the middle of it. Perfect. Asks, all right, what's your what's your name? Are you talking to me or the homeless man? Uh, I'm talking to, to you, who's right in front of me, who oh, said okay, they were the yeah, leader. Yeah, I'm I'm right. Schmidt, the leader of the pack. And you see him like typing away at some sort of uh, keyboard that seems to be projected onto the table that he's standing at. And he says, OK, what region are you from? Oh, shit. What region am I from? Johto. <laughs> <laughs> he says, all right, Schmidt, get ready. Yeah, I'm just ready. Just automatically. OK, great. Out of nowhere, there's a big old flash of light. It seems like he's he's captured your face and you seem to be very prepared as you are prepared for anything because you are the leader. Um, mm -hmm. out comes a little uh, laminated strip that seems to have your face and your basic credentials on it comes he slides it in to a little box a little black box and it seems to have eight slots in it very cushy foam padding hands it to you and he says welcome to Hoenn good luck on your challenge he repeats this process with each of you for the sake of brevity now that you know that photos are coming you do anything fun with your photos can I roll to see how good or bad mine comes out? I might have actually just had you do that anyways, depending. So absolutely, just roll me a d20 and we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'll just see what happens. Yeah. We got a 16. Yeah, it's a pretty good picture. You, got, you, you aren't smiling with your mouth open, but you got a nice little little corner smile there. And uh, your hair looks really good. So yeah, I brush my beard a bit and get an 18. <laughs> okay, yeah, excellent. A, a, a great photo. Your beard looks awesome. Yeah, definitely just for sure. Model posing, everything. Yeah. You you going for a fancy, like, a very dramatic pose, Elodie? Oh, for sure, yeah. Okay, do you want to roll that? I'll give you your sure. performance bonus since you're so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I guess 22? Yeah, you. it's awesome. You 
do a very dramatic pose. Um, do you want to describe what that pose is? Probably like uh, looking, you know, backwards over the shoulder kind of moment. Oh, like almost candid. Yeah, like, <laughs> like it's like it looks like it's supposed to be candid, but like she definitely like knew what she was doing. Excellent. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, e- even the guy taking the picture is like, oh, wow, that's pretty impressive. Everyone gets their photos taken. They all you all get this little black box. It's a batch case. You might want to put that in your inventory and it's got your trainer's license laminated and kind of stuck in a slot to it. I don't know if you'll all be staying in town overnight, but we'll be opening back up for battles at eight. Awesome. We, we, we'll be back. And he says, all right, we, we really got to close down. We got some repairs to do. And he kind of just ushers you all outside and the doors close and you hear a locking ka-chink. and you're staying outside the gym and you got a new trainer's license for the Hoenn region and you got your badge case. Yay! It's the oh. hanging out in town and running errands session. What is up next? What would you all like to do? You're in the center of I town, mean, so you're pretty. You're in a great place to go wherever you want, basically. Who see the witch? Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say unless somebody wants to go get supplies, I'm good with just going to see the witch. Nope, 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 nope. No witch. You you stay and get supplies, and we'll go see the witch. Schmidt, why don't you? As the leader, a hotel room. I, 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 I <laughs> use my We're electing a new leader. Yeah. <laughs> to, to not go see the witch. Uh, yes, democratic. So we already yes, saw the witch. There's a mark, mark row with another hat. <laughs> That's that the witch. Was not. Are you all going to listen to your fears as leader and put it to Absolutely. a vote? No, no way. <laughs> we already won the vote. <laughs> but you you forgot to account for my three fourths vote. Like all of you collectively have one sixteenth vote. So I guess that's how it works in a yeah. democracy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Sam so gives you a side my, eye. My like I don't know how they do it in the Johto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They do it in Johto. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how democracy works in Johto, but uh, yeah. So we're gonna go, and you, if you don't want to, that's fine. But if you want to come, you're more than welcome to. Uh, Cindy again suggests he should get a hotel room while we go see the witch, so we have somewhere to stay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to book us a hotel room where we can stay, like you're more than welcome to. Sam- some shopping. Yeah. Sam will interrupt at that statement and say, here in the Hoenn region, I've noticed that all the Pokemon centers seem to have trainer hostels where you can stay for free. Mm -hmm. However, if you want to get something a little bit more luxury, a little more comfortable without a bunch of other trainers, then there's absolutely a hotel down in the commercial district. Uh, Free is good. (laughs) All right. I've procured a hotel room where we will be staying. (laughs) Amazing. Great job. Fearless leader. In the leader. Pokemon Center. Fearless leader. <laughs> Great Sam's... with all the other homeless people, since Schmidt seems to love them so much. Sam's kind of like, well, you didn't do anything. But, okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Just pat him on the back. He needs it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to send the game up to this mysterious house. Schmidt, do you <laughs> accompany? What is your plan? What do you want to do? Because um, you don't have to join them, but you do have to have a plan of some sort. No, I think I think the gang needs to stay together. OK, so, he, he he is like, <laughs> like, like, behind. like, it's like, oh. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll yeah, protect yeah, yeah. you. He's like lumbering along in the back. It's like, all right, he's like, I want to do this. I want to go to see the boys. I just feel obligated to come anyway. Yeah, great. You as a leader, I guess that is my responsibility. All entered the residential area. It's really neat. Um, it's at the northernmost part of town, which is this is the one of the highest points that isn't a mountain that's in the Hoenn region. So there's just these tall trees everywhere. The sun is starting to set um, and you're on this walkway that started as a narrow path that's kind of expanded to like a street almost of wooden planks that lead to houses. There's one house that stands out among the rest. And you understand that this is what they call the witch. This is her house, as you understand. Um, you all walk up. What do you do? I mean, there's a door, right? Knock politely. <laughs> Cindy's going to knock. Yeah. OK. Um, I immediately take up a defensive position in the rear. Cindy goes and knocks on the door. You hear some shuffling, what sounds like a dish being set down. And then the door creaks open very slightly. It's hard to make out a figure as they're just kind of peeking through the door. And, and you hear a voice say, who is it? <laughs> some people you don't know. Uh. <laughs> Is, is, this, is this what Elodie says? No, no. Okay. 
Oh, what, what, what do we say, guys? Um, I feel like Cindy being, like, from the area. It's like, hi, I'm Cindy. My grandparents own a berry farm. Or <laughs> own the berry farm. This old woman, you can see a little bit more of her face in the darkness. She peers out and she says, what what berry farm are, you, are your parents of? Uh, of course, Cindy knows the name of the berry farm. Sure. Yeah, you, 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 you know that they call themselves the Berry Masters, which is like a little, you know, it's, it's a little overconfident, but it's kind of true. You can see some narrow old eyes widen very slightly. And she says, oh, my goodness, I love having visitors. Please come in, come in. And the door swings open um, before you. You see an old woman. She's hunched over. She's in a, like a, a house gown. It looks very comfortable. She's very wrinkly. Uh, her face is that like pleasant old lady face that's all wrinkly. And it's kind of in a permanent smile, and her eyes are kind of wrinkled shut. But you can tell that she's a very smiley individual. Uh, she has really long hair, really long white hair that's kept back in a loose ponytail, and there's there's some color at the very end of it, just a little bit of red. Um, she she beckons you in. Do you all enter? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Great. <laughs> So we all. Even I, have, I have I have Quacko with me, and I'm like, Quacko, draw your sword, and then Quacko pulls out his leak. Excellent. I'm gonna take it that it's canon that Schmidt refers to Quacko's leak as his sword. Yes. Okay. Very of good. Of course. Um, you all enter what's a pretty cool house. A uh, pretty modest dwelling. Seems like it's appropriate for one person. Right as you enter, it's like a combination foyer slash dining room. To your left, there's a little kitchenette. Um, there's some stairs up front that go up to what is presumably a bedroom. And then in the living room, there's like a little little sofa. There's a coffee table and a, a cabinet with a whole bunch of items on it. There's some candles on the top. And then to your right, there's a bookshelf. She says, please come in, have a seat. I, I love having guests. And you can see that she is boiling some water. So oh, what, what are you making? She says, oh, of course, whenever I have guests, I make tea. Would all of you like some tea? Oh, of course. How did she know she was going to have guests? Didn't she just put the kettle on? She was going to have guests. She just put the kettle on. She could have been making tea for herself. She said there was something already boiling. Water for tea. She overhears this murmuring and she says, okay, I'll get tea for one, two, three, four, and five. And um, she pulls out five little teacups from a dusty cabinet. And you can see that she has a very large jar under this cabinet that is just full of green leaves and it looks like a bunch of mixed in berries as well hmm. um, sam takes a seat she's feeling comfortable and yep. this old woman says well I, i've met you cindy my name is zoe welcome to my humble abode what are all of your names <laughs> my name's gimli pleasure i'm elodie um sam pipes oh, up and Smith. says sorry oh. for him. he's so rude oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Schmidt's just like bugging out, like looking at every single shelf. Every <laughs> uh, are you investigating? Like, are you looking for something in particular? Probably not. No. Okay. Just and freaking out. Just bugging. And Sam pipes up and says, "Hi, I'm Sam. I just met all these these folks, but they seem really cool." Zoe says, "Oh, excellent, excellent. Let me prepare these." And she pulls down her um, coasters for her teacups. It seems like the water's almost done. She has this giant jar that's full of tea and she has these little homemade tea bags and she slips them in, pours the water in, grabs a little tray, sets the, the tea in front of each of you and she has a seat at the head of the table and she says, what brings you to my house today? Well, mm -hmm. uh, if you've noticed, some of the Pokemon in the area have been acting a little different and we're just, you know, checking around, seeing if anybody knows anything about what might be causing that zoe says oh yes of course and she sips her tea and she says you know a lot of the locals seem to be blaming me for this heat wave and for the behavior of the pokemon that's been quite strange lately i, I i've been a target of persecution here for a while but i'm just trying to do my best to live a quiet life do i know what's causing it not directly but i have my own theories she takes a sip of tea also take a sip of tea excellent i'm taking a sip of this tea yeah um it's really good it's yeah. it's of course pretty bitter but it's got some flavoring in it that are like from the berries yeah. it's just the um, way i like it yeah it's it's simultaneously relaxing and energizing it's hmm. it's really good it's the perfect tea um sam is like blowing on her cup it's a little, little too hot for her what um what are your theories 
Zoe takes another sip of her tea. She says, oh, young one, I've been around for a very, very long time and I've I've seen the world. Situations such as this with the weird weather and the Pokemon acting up have happened a couple times here in the Hoenn region. In fact, pretty recently, just a mere couple decades ago, there was a situation with uh, who who was it? Team Magma and Team Aqua and interfering with with right, right. with Pokemon and history that they had no business dealing with. Mm, I remember Cindy that kind of starts young. her eyes at the mention of a uh, Team Aqua. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like everything's fine. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. This this perks Sam's attention too. She's like, oh yeah, I. <laughs> she doesn't say this, but she she's curious. She's very curious about what Zoe has to say. Zoe says, things always go awry when people with big ideas meddle in ways that they shouldn't be. Hmm. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. I agree too. Yeah. Would you like to hear a story? Most definitely. Oh, sure. So she sits up, uh, she pulls out her chair. She moves pretty slowly, but like pretty spry for an old woman. Um, she walks past her little cabinet where there seems to be candles and like a photograph. There seems to be something that's like on an altar. And she goes over to her bookshelf. She thumbs around, pulls out a dusty little book. Um, she, she wipes the dust off of it and she opens it up and she says to you, do you all know the story? About why wild Pokemon appear in tall grass. I never really thought about it. She she gestures to her bookcase and she says, I'm very proud of my collection. I've collected oh. most of my books from the Sinnoh region. Oh. She, she flips it open. Let me read you an excerpt from Sinnoh region's myth. Long ago, when Sinnoh had just been made, Pokemon and humans led separate lives. That's not to say they did not help each other. No, indeed they did. They supplied each other with goods and supported each other. A Pokemon proposed to the others to always be ready to help humans. If asked, that Pokemon be ready to appear before humans always. Thus, to this day, Pokemon appear to us if we venture into the tall grass. She looks at all of you and she says, There's, there's so much history to this world that seems to be have forgotten by the young ones. And the young ones get this, these ideas for power or a- ambition and and they go to extreme lengths to achieve them, and they they interrupt the balance that has been here since the beginning of time. And she just kind of closes her book, and closes her eyes, and looks upwards for a bit, and then she goes back to the table and enjoys her tea. And she says, "You seem like an eclectic bunch. Where are you all from?" Really, all over the place. I'm from Sinnoh. Her her eyes kind of brighten a little bit, and she says, "Oh, Sinnoh. I've spent much of my time there with my." Mm-hmm. My old partner. Mm-hmm. What brings you here many to years the... In the mines? <laughs> oh, the mines. Which ones? Uh, mostly in Connellab, but then we moved to Orbrook. You, you say you say um, the Connellab mines, and her eyes widen a little bit, and she says, "Ooh, those mines have great artifacts in them. I've heard. Mm-hmm. It's very treacherous, too. Did you did you perhaps find any artifacts while you were mining? Uh." Not at the time. It was always collected by the mining company. So <laughs> she says, I know. You, you know, you can tell me I always keep my best kept secrets over tea. <laughs> and she gives you a wink as she says that. <laughs> I trust that, ma'am. Very much so. She says, very well, very well. Her How- suspicion <laughs> intensifies. She she gestures to the rest of you and she says, well, tell me a little bit about yourselves. I don't have guests and learn nothing about them. Um, I'm from Kalos. She says, ooh. Very fun. I've only been there very briefly with my partner. Are you enjoying your time here in Hoenn? Yeah, it's definitely uh, different. I'm excited to try all of the different foods. Zoe gives you a nod and she says, hmm, I think you'll find some very high quality cuisine here. Yes, yes. I chose to settle here in the Hoenn region after my partner and I had our adventures because it's just such a comfortable place to live with so much diversity. I think you'll, you'll have a really good time while you're here. Um, Sam chips in and says, hey, I'm, I'm from Sinnoh, too. I had a really great time living there. Oh. And Zoe says, oh, interesting. What brings you to Hoenn? Sam responds, it's so strange, like role playing with yourself, but sometimes it's, it's <laughs> like it's really important. Um, yeah, yeah. Sam responds, well, I came here for work. Um, I've always wanted to visit, though, and I, it seems like I just came at the, the wrong time or, you know, maybe it's the right time. 
And she she looks at all of you and she smiles. <laughs> um, Zoe says, oh, yes, yes, you'll you'll surely enjoy yourself here. Mm. We may be stuck here, but it's definitely going to be an adventure. Cindy says, born and raised. Owen. Been trying to get my gym badges, but uh, I haven't won any battles yet. But here we are. <laughs> trying again. No, we won that battle at um, the secret base. Yeah, but no gym battle. <laughs> Fair. Gotta give yourself credit though, where credit is due. Zoe looks over at Cindy and she says, Oh, you'll do just fine. A time honored tradition between people and Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Did uh, you ever participate in the gym challenge? She looks fondly over towards the back wall by the bookcase and she says, No, I, I'm not much of a battler myself, or I guess I'm not great at giving commands, but my partner, Casey, always an excellent battler, had many badges, I think. They ended up with a total of 28 badges between the regions. Incredible. Wow. Very talented. And I miss them dearly. You can all observe at the back wall it, what this shelf seems to be is some sort of shrine. Um, there's like a little black and white photograph of a person. They're, they're holding like a fox Pokemon up in the sky and they're smiling. And this fox Pokemon looks very happy. Um, there's some unlit candles. There's behind the glass case. There's a black and gold Pokeball. And there's just binders of, of photos and just general memorabilia. What do you call it? Scrapbook. <laughs> there, there's scrapbooks within this uh, little display. And she looks mm. over at it adorn adoringly. Zoe is oh. vibing, sipping her tea. She says, mm. if you've come for ancient knowledge, you've come to the right place. Mm. I know a great deal many things about not just the Hoenn region, but the world as a whole. In my travels, I have learned a great deal. And thanks to these mm. books, and she gestures over to the wall, she says, I've learned a great deal from these as well. Some people mm. take suspicion in my teachings, in the knowledge that I have, and thus they've called me the witch as such, and maybe because I have so much tea, and she gestures over to her giant tea jar. Um, it is really quite <laughs> enormous. It's, it's it, like if it held liquid, it would be like several, several gallons. It's, it takes up the whole counter, basically. I'm always happy to have visitors. So please come by anytime just for tea, asking questions. I don't mind at all. It wasn't the whole purpose to ask about the weather. Mm -hmm. We did, but she didn't did really know that? anything. Okay. She just told well, she said she suspected it had like similar. Yeah. Grout on. Basically, she alluded to. Okay, if we talked about everything, then that's it, I guess. Schmidt Schmidt is is does not like witches, but also respects their space. So he would like to get out of here and leave everything alone. Do you just that's like get up and backpedal out? Do you say anything? He actually like literally walks backwards, and it's like, oh well, I guess we don't have anything else to say. Or let's go, let's <laughs> let's get out of here, guys. Man. Great time, good tea. Let, <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah, man, we appreciate you welcoming us into your home, but I think. We have all the questions we need. She Okay, yeah. She she waves at you, and she says, well, it's very, very nice meeting you. Once again, if you have any more questions about the world or me or anything at all, please, please feel free to come by. And don't forget, my best kept secrets are always kept over tea. And she gives you another wink. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Does, does everyone depart? Yes. 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 Okay, great. You walk off into the the planked walkway in the residential area. Um, Sam looks at a gadget on her wrist and she says, well, I know that you all have some more things you'd like to do, but now that it's cooling down, I think I want to go back onto the route and see if I can make any more headway on this mystery. It's unfortunate that I don't think Zoe's been able to help us out very much, but she gave me kind of an idea of what might be happening. Would you all be OK if I went and did that while you continued your your errands? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, so, Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Good luck. Sam gives you a wave. She says, I'll meet up with you back at the Pokemon Center. Sounds good. And she runs off to the route where you came from. Mm -hmm. There's a couple more places you can visit in Fortress City. What would you like to do? Uh, can you list out the couple places for us again? Sure. As a reminder. There's a building with a bunch of people milling about that you're pretty close to. Um, it would just be a left turn out from the residential area. There's a big sign that says Rite of Passage, Fortress City. And then there's it, this seems like a guy in a lab coat and he's like shouting at the roof for some reason, like he's facing the sign and he looks very upset. And then just further south of there, past the gym is a commercial area. As you understand, it's what Sam described as a commercial area where you can buy things. I'm I'm a little uh, 
guy in lab coat. Dusty. <laughs> yelling. Let's put no. that. Um. I mean, we're still trying to investigate. Do y'all want to check out this uh, this guy with the lab coat? Yeah. Yeah. I'm up for it. That's all we know is yelling at sign. Does the sign say yeah. anything? Or the sign Do says "Rite of Passage, Fortree City." Oh, that's right. Those were the. They said that that was the research facility. Mm-hmm. Right. Guy probably just got fired or something and is mad. But we should we should probably still if we're looking to investigate we should. Yeah, probably but like, why did they fire him? him? But like, also, what if he's upset and wants to hurt people? Uh, then we should I have three Pokemon. People. It's fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but what if he wants to hurt us? Yeah, we'll be fine. I mean, but you're fearless. What do you care? I have never said that in my life. <laughs> you're our fearless leader. Never <laughs> have I said fearless. Fear is what keeps you alive. Mm. Go to the research Cindy facility. Cindy strolls regardless. on over and says hi anyway. <laughs> okay, great. She <laughs> walks just past go. everyone. Yeah, we just hi! Go. What you doing? There's a guy in a lab coat, and he looks clearly upset, and he's just, like, shouting something at... You can tell that there was someone in a window that's towards the roof, and they have their hands on the sign, and he says, No, 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 they got it wrong. It's it's a translation error. It's not rite of passage. It's rite of learning. We're here to learn. There's nothing about passing. Please, we need a new sign. And he just is so <laughs> upset, and he's just ranting and raving about, like, how they got it wrong. And he turns around, and he says, Oh, hello, would you happen to be a trainer? Yeah. He gets very excited and he grabs your hand and he shakes it vigorously. He says, yes, yes, welcome, welcome. My name is Professor Hemlock and welcome to the Fortree City Rite of Learning. And he <laughs> jeers up at the employee who's trying to like unfit this sign. Um, he looks at all of you and he says, well, I hope that you're all trainers. This is a new facility we've opened here. If you haven't heard of it, there's an organization in the Laris region. It's called the Rite of Learning. And there they take in young trainers and they can answer questions about their Pokemon, teach them new moves. It's a really delightful place. Um, why don't you come in? You can, be our, you can be our first experiments, so to speak. And he lets out a giggle. He ushers you to the big sliding glass doors. And um, does everyone enter? Absolutely. Great. Yeah, okay. I enter, but I tell Quacko to draw a sword. <laughs> <laughs> Quacko draws his sword. He, he may have, you know, let Zoe get by but he's not going to let Professor Hemlock get by. That's for sure. <laughs> that actually <laughs> thinks the leak is we, a sword. We do not respect yeah. this. <laughs> he genuinely it's thinks it's thing. a sword. You all walk in this large dome-like building. It's clearly a new facility. There's still that kind of scent of like new building smell. You don't know what I'm talking about. Like, like freshly laid linoleum and whatnot. There's all these like glass chambers. There's lots of little offices. There's lots of people in lab coats running around. And there's lots of little Pokemon that are, that are carrying things. Um, you see there's some sort of uh, turbine spinning in the center of the room. There's all these little poles that look like they conduct electricity. Um, there's like a swimming pool back in the far right corner. Um, and Professor Hemlock says, welcome, welcome, everyone. Yes, this is the this is the right of learning in Fortree City. Did you bring your Pokemon with you? Of course. Yeah, yeah we got them. Please show okay. me your specimens. I'm visibly uncomfortable at the term specimens. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. <laughs> Quacko sword I intensifies. I do pull out Trevor, but I'm like, mm. <laughs> OK, um, Professor Hemlock eyes Quacko who is behaving in a very intimidating manner or a very wary manner, one or the other. And he says, oh, incredible, fascinating, a canto far-fetched. And he kneels down and he has a clipboard and he starts writing something very, very fast. And he says, I, 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 he, I, I move my body in a position in between him and my, my far-fetched. Professor Hemlock says, incredible, this looks like a very, very fierce specimen. And he seems to be taking notes on it. And he says, what was the last thing that ate? And he's still scribbling and scribbling. Bob's. Uh, <laughs> yes, so it was Bob's, wasn't it? We haven't eaten since. Yeah. Um, Professor Hemlock says, "Ooh, kebabs! Incredible, incredible!" And then he stands up, and he's just got he. You can kind of peek on his paper, and it's literally scribbles. Like you really cannot tell what he was writing down. I don't know how long you've been together, but I assume that you're here for the gym challenge, correct? Kind of. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Excellent. If you have any questions about your partners, about moves they may learn, about making them stronger, perhaps making them more defensive, more evasive, perhaps, to prepare you for the gym battle, please let me and my aides know. In exchange for research and notes, we can help you become better battlers. 
And and he hmm. walks by and kind of eyes Farfetch. He's like, oh yeah, that's a cool Farfetch, dude. He like melts some of his defensiveness a little bit, and he's like, yeah, this is a cool Farfetch. Professor Hemlock gestures and he says, well, who would like to go first? Me and Trevor will do it. You step forward, Professor Hemlock says, oh, a rock and roll. And he turns his notebook and, and he, he starts scribbling notes. He says, what, what do you think about your partner? Is he effective in combat? Hmm? Very much so. We have very good synergy. We've been partners for a long time. Excellent. Excellent. And he's still he's still drawing. It looks like he's he's doing a doodle now because his pen clearly moved in a really big circle. Um, he says a rock type should be well equipped to fight the Fortree City Gym. But are there any techniques or any questions you want to have answered about your friend here? I want to know how best effectively to use him in combat. I'm not very experienced, so I would really like to know how I can use him in combat more so. Professor Hemlock says, mm, yes, yes. Would you like him to be stronger, more defensive, more evasive? Probably more defensive. Excellent. Professor Hemlock gets very excited. He says, come with me, come with me. And he just walks like a few steps forward, but isolates Trevor and Gimli. These little panels slide up from the ground. And it, it seems to have introduced like a sandy terrain in the middle of this laboratory. Um, there, it's all walled off. And he says, if you would mind setting down your friend Trevor here in the sand. Of course. Great. You plop Trevor down in the sand and he says, Albert. And then an aide is like, oh, yeah, I got Albert right here. And he has a machop and he plops down the machop down in the sand. Instruct Trevor to use Harden. Oh, use Harden. Trevor tightens up as a rock type would using Harden. And Professor Hemlock says, Albert, go. And then Albert just punches Rog and Rolla right in the face. Just boom. Super, it like leaves like a shockwave in the sand. And it's like very loud. Professor Hemlock says, oh, excellent. Truly, truly incredible. And he has Albert give him a couple more smacks. It seems like Trevor is not like in any pain at all. Um, Albert is like hitting in a very, very deliberate way. The sand is kind of flying around. There's like a small sandstorm that's forming around Trevor as he's getting smacked uh, several times by this little, little machop. And he says, OK, perfect. That's enough. Very good. Professor Hemlock gestures to you and says, if you wouldn't mind inspecting Trevor currently. So you pick him up and you take a look at, a look at him and his rocky exterior is a lot more smooth than it used to be. Hmm. It seems like all the sand has kind of eroded some of his rougher edges and he seems a little, little bit more hardy. You are welcome to add one point to his constitution or his AC. So basically, rock and roller just got put into a rock tumbler. Pretty much made oh. shiny. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He looks okay. at his at his clipboard. He says, "Oh, we've got some really, really great research. We don't get many Unovan Pokemon in here, so this is yes, this is wonderful. This is wonderful." Mm. He says, "Would anyone like to go next?" That's amazing. <laughs> Cindy lets out her menagerie. <laughs> All three of them. All three of them. Great. Like, these are my friends. Professor Hemlock looks over at Cindy and Cookie the Goomy, Izzy the Salandit, and Soul Eater, a.k.a. Soul the Vulpix, and he says, Oh my, this is incredible. AIDS? And then, like, a couple AIDS and lab coats rush over, and he's like, I can't take notes for all these Pokemon at once. I will need your help. And they just are scribbling descriptions and asking you questions and pestering you and pestering you about these Pokemon. Um, after a little bit, Professor Hemlock says, well, we'd love to hang out with all of your friends, but if we're going to go through each trainer, we'll have to have you pick one. So if you would like to uh, have us conduct some research on one of these Pokemon, you'll have to choose. He looks at you and he says, sometimes the greatest weapon is information. And he points to his head. <laughs> you don't have to. Cindy, in her infinite wisdom. Mm -hmm. So go so Cookie is not actually a cookie? <laughs> He he gestures and he and he says, "This Goomy, th this is Cookie." Yes, it's he, a Cookie. He he kneels down and he puts his hands like just outside of Cookie's face and he looks at you and he says, "May I?" Yeah. Okay. Of he course. he grabs Goomy's cheeks and he pinches him and shakes him around and Goomy's just blah, 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 like Cookie's just like getting all <laughs> gooey and he says, "Absolutely incredible." And then he gestures and he says, may I hold this specimen for a moment? Yeah, sure. So he picks up Cookie and he goes over to a little table, a little a little altar, and he plops Cookie down on there. Um, and he says, this will only take a moment. And he presses some buttons and some like 
grid looking lasers scan over cookie over and over again and he says oh interesting fascinating Ooh, very good and then there's a little ding and he looks at a monitor and he says oh wow something he's made a big discovery clearly um he very gingerly picks up cookie and hands cookie back to you and he asks where where did you find this gumi on the way here, but like right outside of Lily Cove. He writes this down and he says, you are you from here? Do you, do you understand that Gumi aren't particularly common in the Hoenn region? I've never seen one before. I genuinely thought it was a cookie because it ate some of my cookie. He lets out a <laughs> chuckle. And he says, oh, genius. We love keen observers here. <laughs> he says, I've detected something very unusual about this Gumi. It appears like its DNA is different from the other Gumis that we have on file. I would trust if you would please raise this Gumi well and one day take it back here to our research facility. I would love to study this Gumi more. You got it, dude. I think by this point, Schmidt has like shed all suspicion of this guy and is like, oh, wow, research. This is awesome. I bet he thinks Quacko is strong enough. So he's going to send out Patricia and be like, I got this Pokemon today. Like super excited. But before we do, Patricia, I wanted to mention, I know I did. it doesn't seem like I gave you a bonus for Cookie. If you want, just like for flavor, on Cookie's stat page, if you go into like the ability section, you can fill one in with question marks. Oh. If you, if you want to have that little gamey sensation of like something is there. Hmm. So I send out Patricia, oh, that's and right. I'm like, I caught this Pokemon today. Her name is Patricia, and I love her. It seems like Professor Hemlock is delighted every time he sees a new Pokemon. And he says, oh, incredible. May I, may I, may I? And he like gestures towards uh, her wings. Yes, 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 yes. Um, he grabs. He's like starting to like mimic the, the gestures of the professor. And he's like getting as excited about the Pokemon as the professor is. He reaches out and he like grabs the tips of Patricia's wings. Like they're super floofy and he's just kind of dangling her in the air. And he says, oh, incredible. So light, so fluffy. Mm and then he just kind of drops and then patricia starts flapping in place and he pulls out his clipboard and he says this is this is quite the specimen you probably caught this one right on route 20 i'm guessing yes 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 i caught it today this is the first pokemon i've ever caught oh incredible you must be so so proud unlike gumi swablu are quite common in this area but this one this one is quite quite unique is there anything you would like to know about it is there anything you'd like to teach it how would you Uh, how how would you like to he says, well, this one, this one seems quite energetic, does it not? And its beak, its beak is nice and pointed. And he, he looks at it really closely. He, he examines okay. Patricia's beak. He hasn't given it like a complete scan or anything, but. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Beak is a little more pointy. Taking notes, taking notes. I guess. I don't know. What does Patricia do? Well, Swablu tend to be very versatile battlers. They can, they can do many great things. They can be damage dealers. They can be disruptive, cause status ailments. It seems like this one is better suited for close quarters combat. Um, I would be happy to help you teach it a new move or perhaps work on its strength. Up to you. Close quarters combat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, maybe make it a little, a little, little more defensive. Like, like, our, like our friend over there. He says, oh, excellent. I cannot wait to get started. And he picks up Patricia out of the air, just kind of like, if his hands were outstretched and one was like underhand, one was overhand, he just plop, just like pinched Patricia's body like vertically up and down. Carries her over to um, this wind turbine that's placed in the ground. And he says he looks at Patricia in the eyes and he says, are you ready, Patricia? How does Patricia respond to this? Uh, I like to imagine Schmidt's like right behind him being like, all right, Patricia, let's go. And then Patricia gets like determination. In, in in her eyes and she's just like and then like let's out a let's out a squawk and like flaps her wings like she's ready to go um professor hemlock says patricia now is your time and like you don't know exactly what's going to happen but he just chucks her into this wind tunnel that is vertically arranged in the center of this research facility and the wind is blowing in like really unpredictable ways like there's a turbine on the bottom there's a turbine on the top but there's these slots and like in the mechanism that spins the blades that redirect where the wind goes and Patricia seems to be going like up and to the right and then like gets thrown into to the side and she's doing her best to maintain her mobility. Would you roll a constitution check for her? Oh, 
with a modifier. Uh, oh no, that's a four. It's a four. Yeah. Okay. Patricia is getting buffeted by these winds, and it's really, really intense. And, and she she slams into a glass panel that's on the side, and she and she gets carried away by the wind for a second, and then they the the turbines um, cool down a little bit, and they become a little oh. less predictive. Professor Hemlock says, "Patricia, are you doing okay?" Um, and in my head, Patricia lets out a, a confident squawk and is ready for another go. If you'd like to roll another Constitution check, you you can't. You can't make this up. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> this one is a five. <laughs> this one's a five. Excellent. <laughs> Professor Hemlock boots up the spinning turbines again, and he says, all right, Patricia, round two. It's now or never, and Patricia is all confident. Um, the winds start up again, and Patricia having a hard time keeping up. It's, uh, it's a little nasty. It's, it's not, not a comfortable breeze. It's not something that Patricia used to flying in. Um, the winds buffet around and they buffet around and she once again slides into the glass panel and Professor Hamlock says, okay, that's enough. Shut it down. Shut it down. And the blade stops spinning. Um, okay. he, I'd imagine Schmidt like runs to Patricia immediately. Like sure. as soon as it's safe. Absolutely. He's like, Patricia, are you okay? Schmidt goes over to Patricia. It seems like she's all right. She isn't in a battle. It's like she didn't encounter incredible pain or anything. But um, she's just a little battered. She's a little upset. Professor Hemlock says, you know, she did better than it might seem. I, I think that she might have gotten a little something out of that. Patricia is young and you caught her, what, just hours ago, perhaps. But she has a great power dwelling within her. If you train, I believe you'll come across a very powerful attack. But it needs more work. So remember, in your downtime, train with her. And bring her to battles whenever you can. Okay. This is a move, and you don't know what it is. You can use it in battle. You might want to write this in your notes. You can use it in battle. You'll have to make a nature check. If you pass the nature check, the effect will happen. And if you do it enough, you might learn it. You might know what the effect is. But you have a new secret move. Professor Hemlock writes a few more notes, and he says, Well, not, last but not least, and he gestures over to Elodie, and he says, "Is there any? Do you have any partners you would like to have researched? Uh, yes, please. Uh, and then I push Cabbage forward. Cabbage is very excited. Excellent. Um, Professor Hemlock, it seems like every time he's met one of your partners, he's been equally excited. He says, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. A real life milsery. And he walks over and he kind of like pokes her. Um, how does Cabbage respond to being poked? Cabbage is not a huge fan of it. Mm -hmm. uh, she just kind of, you know, grimaces. He says, absolutely fascinating. I cannot believe I'd see one of these in my days. Um, Professor Hemlock says, are there any particular battle skills you would like to train Cabbage in? Or perhaps you'd like to learn more about her biology? And he just kind of trails off with his clipboard. I, I guess I'm curious as to her biology. She seems like she's made of milk. He says, oh, yes, indeed. Fairy types are very peculiar. Sometimes they're very food oriented. Well, what's the deal with that? I don't know. We may never know. <laughs> He's, he says, may I? And he kind of cups his hands. Under Milsery. Sure, go ahead. He says, wonderful, wonderful. And he goes over to the same altar um, where Cookie was scanned. And he presses a button, and down from the button is basically what it looks like a kitchen blender. And he's like, oh, All no. right, now's your chance, uh, what, are you what are you doing? <laughs> are, are you going to stop him from doing this? Do you not I'm trust not going to stop him. I'm just going to be like, What are you doing? He says, oh, don't worry, we've done this plenty of times, despite the fact he's just told you that he's never interacted with the milsery. Um, he throws cabbage in the blender and he oh, turns God. it on and cabbage spins around like milk in a blender. And like she keeps her form, of course, but she's spinning. She's having a great time. She's, uh, you know, it's what milk was made to do. Um, he says, oh, fascinating, incredible, this is amazing. And you can tell that her body is becoming, like, gradually slightly more whipped. It's like a, it's like a thicker consistency as this is happening. And he says, yes, yes, of course, mm, yes, great, great, great. And then he turns off the blender and pulls her out, and she looks a little dizzy, but she looks pretty good. Just maybe a little, like, a little toughened up. I've always heard that Milstery love being spun around. Perhaps... In the right situation, under the right circumstances, I understand that uh, in the Galar region, they tend to dote upon their milseries by giving them candies or other food items. 
If you're curious about your Milseries biology, I would consider giving it a gift and then giving it oh to spin. God. Ooh, okay. Are we literally about to just stick? <laughs> Milseries in a blender every time we run into one. He, he... Go, blender, go! Now, Milseries are quite rare, so the research is still very limited, but I understand that the quality of your milsery may change upon evolution depending on what it holds. So please, when you make this decision, be very intentional about it. Okay, and you don't know anything about what you give it might... the effects of the things to give it? <laughs> I can't phrase this. Roll me like an intelligence check. <laughs> I think you... <laughs> learned how to evolve it. No, I... I recognize that. Just, um, just throw it in a blender. Well, I'm spinning it. I don't think it needs to be a blender. Hopefully. Uh, I got a 21. You got a 21. Great. Despite the gibberish that you just spouted, it seems like Professor <laughs> Hemlock like totally understands. He's like, mm, <laughs> yes, I know that this is all can be very confusing, but you're very smart. You're very eloquent. <laughs> he, he says, eloquent. he says, it is certainly common to give your milsery candy. Our research suggests, based on the Laris Region Institutes, that you may not necessarily need candy, or perhaps you may not even need anything edible to have doted to your milsery. Please keep this in mind. I'm gonna give milsery my whisk and just kind of, like, turn her a little bit. Okay. <laughs> just see what that does. Cabbage That's just kind of spins with the whisk. It's really yeah, cute. Mm -hmm. It is really, really cute. But... Nothing really happens. Nothing happens. From Interesting. The, okay. Fr from this process, you are welcome to grant one point to either constitution or wisdom or intelligence for cabbage. Professor Hemlock says, wow, we've gotten such a great deal of information from you all today. Please, I would love it if you came back at some other point on your adventure. I, you, I'm so sorry that we are just getting set up here, but I promise this is a very exciting adventure for us here in Fortree. If, if you are traveling the Hoenn region and it seems like you're taking the gym challenge, I understand that there are other locations that are opening new right of learnings. The closest one, I believe, is in... And then he kind of like looks at his clipboard. He says, ah, yes, a Lava Ridge Town. If you find yourself there, please, please stop by. My associates would love to see your Pokemon. Okay. Um, thank yeah. you. Yeah, this was interesting. Very insightful. He says, no, of course, thank you, thank you. I have much to notate, so please, please run along. And he just, like, turns around and completely ignores you and runs into an office. And the aides are just scurrying about. It seems like there's a Pokemon that's carrying, like, a little beam somewhere, like a steel beam, taking it to a different wall. And people are just doing their job. You exit the Rite of Learning, and you can see that leaning up against the wall, there's a sign that says Rite of Passage, and they took it down because it's a typo from a translation error. Uh, the sun is starting to set, but it's still really hot. You're on the eastern edge of the town and there's still a lot of heat coming from route 120 um it seems like it hasn't cooled down at all despite the sun setting and then directly in front of you is the commercial district would you like to check that out absolutely is there a kmart in town uh yeah. schmidt is like oh man it's hot and the sun's getting in my eyes i sure wish i had a hat and then patricia just like kind of floats onto schmidt's head and then sits on him like a hat excellent Aww. you love That's to so see cute. it Cool. Yeah, you approach the commercial district. There's, um, it's interesting. There's like one big building with a main entrance. It's like a wooden door. And while this is a district, in quotes, it seems like all the buildings are connected by like little wooden hallways. And there's other multiple little doors that lead into these different areas. There's no distinct signage. Um, it just kind of says Fortree City Mall above the double door. Yeah, let's go shopping. You enter this building and it is truly like an emporium. Like it's one big contained stores, but there's hallways that like loop around the block and it's all just one giant building. It's crazy. Right in front of you, there's a large wooden desk and there's a man who looks kind of like moody, maybe kind of tired. It's hard to tell. He's got ruffled black hair. He's kind of just staring at the desk. And on top of the desk, there is a mouse Pokemon that has tints of blue um, and it's holding onto a wire that is connected to a little box that has a record in it, and it's playing some music. And they're just hanging out. They're just having a time. They Can we recognize this as K. Um, this does not look like K. This doesn't look like any shopkeep you've seen before. He looks up okay. to you, and he just kind of says, "Welcome in." Hello. <laughs> I give him like a, "Yo, what up, G? What's the word on the street?" 
<laughs> he looks at you and he says, I don't know you. <laughs> Let All me right, know fam, if... keep it 20. And then he like pounds his chest and like does a hand sign. Are you trying to evoke something out of him? No. Okay. Just... This is just for flavor. Yeah. Okay. I was like, should I make you roll for this? Because that could be fun. Um, <laughs> roll to impress him. Right. <laughs> roll, that I, roll that I accidentally throw the wrong hand sign out. Uh oh. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Initiate combat. <laughs> no, we don't have to do that. We don't have to do that. This guy kind of just gives you a look. He's like, uh, let me know if you need help finding anything. Cindy just does that, like, you, you sm- when you make eye contact with somebody as you're walking, that, like, little smile, but, like, doesn't really say anything. Mm-hmm. This is, like, the one of the biggest shops you've been to. Like, it's, it's like the equi- it's the indoor equivalent of the festival you were at, basically, but just, like, without the food. Like, there is clothing, there is trainer's goods, there's, like, adventuring goods, whatever you're looking for is going to be here for the most part. So just let me know what it is, and we can work on getting it, potentially. Potentially. Might not have everything. Mitt needs new battle shoes if he's going to be battling. New shoes. New battle shoes. What do you have in battle mind for, for shoes? Like, what what's, what style are you thinking of? Mm, let me do some research to get back to you. Okay. Is there, like, a... Is there a food section? There's a, like, kitchen section. Um... They so have like a camping section. Yes, yes. Mm. They have mm-hmm. they have stuff that's designed for trainers. They have like I don't know what you call them like portable burners with like solar panels. They have kitchenware. They have spices. They have jerky. They have all sorts of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, Schmidt has found the shoes. Okay, what? Well, perhaps. What are you looking for? <laughs> they literally just say <laughs> the word battle on them. <laughs> <You're bad. laughs> oh man. Okay, roll me a d twenty. Uh, that is a six (laughs) it's a six great um yeah you have you have these dream shoes in mind and you think you found them and they look really really awesome um unfortunately they aren't black and gold they are pink and green um the, the shoes are pink and the text is green and it's um the font is like very similar to Comic Sans, but they're there, and there's a price tag on them. Comic Sans, yeah, like the battle best shoes one. I had in mind. No, I don't think these can are the help shoes. people with dyslexia distinguish the letters better. It's good for something. You, you said you wanted to ask the clerk something. Yeah, I was gonna ask if they have the better shoes in the back. Sure. Yeah. So, do you describe to him what you're looking for? Yeah. He's a little upset that you're bothering him, and he says, "I'll." Yeah, like everyone always says, like, oh, like go check in the back, but we like literally have nothing different in the back. But just to make you happy, I'll go look for you. He stands up, and as his shoulders lean back for him to stand up, you see that he has a name tag. Um, his name tag says Shay. He stands up, walks towards the back. Uh, I definitely wanted to check like the survivalist slash camping section. Cool. Me. Are you looking at anything in particular? Um, I think I'm just perusing, so I definitely want to just like scope out what they may or may not have sure yeah they have tents they have Mm. flashlights they have bungee cords they have chains Mm. they have thermoses all sorts of stuff uh what's the pricing on both the tent and the bungee cord the tent is a flat 100 and the bungee cord comes in a four pack they are 12 feet long and that is going to be 20 my boots are fine is there any like sun hats in this area um, not in the camping area, but if you turn around, there's like a hat rack. All sorts okay. of hats. I'm yeah, definitely looking for like classic like dad sun hat with the little like drape thing in the back since we're walking around the sunny area. And yeah. I'm quite bald. Like yeah. a bucket helmet. Yeah, is it like bucket a bucket hat. hat or a straw hat or like a baseball cap? Like what are you looking for? Um, yeah, I guess more like a bucket like safari vacation dad hat with a little shawl on the back. Okay. Kind of like he's going on his first like safari. Yeah, give me a roll. 11 11 <laughs> you find a, a bucket hat and it has like a green and white paisley pattern on it and it's a little mm. garish and then on the front of it someone it looks like someone just like stitched a white patch and on the white patch there's red text and it says women want me carvana fear me <laughs> <laughs> my wife would love this i'm gonna buy it <laughs> 
It is very <laughs> ugly, but it has a uh, twelve Poké Dollar price tag on it. No, we're taking it. Okay, my wife would love that. Cool. She would find that hysterical. Are you shopping for anything else, Gimli? Uh, no, that's all I need. Okay, cool. You walk up to the counter, and um, Shay is returning, and he has a shoebox. And he says, well, I found these ones, but I'm not sure if that's exactly what you're looking for. He opens the box to show to Schmidt, and he finds black and gold sneakers. They have text on the side, and they say bottle. Bottle? (laughs) (laughs) Oh... He said, I could sell you some gold paint if you just kind of want to patch that up. If you're looking for, for, for the battle text. I don't think Schmidt is especially crafty himself, so I don't. Dang, I think he'll wait. I, th- I think he'll 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 buy the shoes at a later time. All right, because they have to be the perfect shoes. The, that'll be his level up, right? Like in his mind, he's like, OK, we're going to go in. We're going to do this first gym easy. And then whenever gyms start getting hard, we're going to get the shoes. And then it's going to be our level up. And we're going to be a better trainer. Does he say this out loud? It, it's yes. like the plan in his head. <laughs> OK, I, I imagine he's like saying it quietly to himself, but it's like audible enough for everyone to hear. OK, it. I feel like Quacko's like <laughs> nodding along. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> if it's just just on his head, just vibing. <laughs> Good. Um, Shay says, all right, man, whatever. And he just like literally throws the shoes behind him. Oh, yeah, I'd like to take these, please. Great. He he looks at the hat that says women want me, Carvana, fear me. And he looks at you and he's just like, sure, man, uh, that's going to be 32. Gotcha. Do you pay you it? Go. Absolutely. Cool. Shay takes your money. The little mouse that's on his desk. Um, it's got tinges of blue on it. Looks at the body. And let's add a little squeak. And then he closes his eyes, takes the goes back to napping, powering whatever this music player is. Um, and he hands you the items. He says, thank you. Anyone else looking for anything for their journey? Be like, uh, excuse me, your your name is Shay, right? He says, yep, don't make me do the thing. And then he reaches back and he puts on a hat and it says, welcome to Shay Mart. And he's like, here we are in Shay Mart. This is my store. My family runs the businesses all over Hoenn. And then he takes off the hat and he's like, that didn't that didn't rhyme. I feel like that should have rhymed. He's like, I didn't write the song, lady. Can I get something <laughs> for you? Uh, are you perhaps familiar with K of Kmart? And he's like, yeah, K's my cousin. And then he like gestures over to the wall and there's a family photograph of like 30 dudes. <laughs> they all look pretty similar. They all have similarities. Um, yeah. as, as you're close, you can tell that um, Shay's face is similar to K's face, but he's just like moody and has long hair. So it's not quite Officer Jenny vibes, but it's mm-hmm. like they're all different but similar. Yep. I like it. We How know much- Kay. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we do know Kay. We happen to save, you know, you do you know Pablo, right? He he kind of raises an eyebrow, he's like, I love Pablo. And like like his eyes kind of water a little bit. <laughs> he's so- <laughs> so enamored everyone loves and he's like you met pablo and his little blue mouse friend is fully awake and sitting at attention and is like looking directly at elodie yeah uh he got kidnapped unfortunately but you know we were able to save pablo and return him to k but it was it was really tough oh my goodness they're the people in around the lily cove area really know how to battle and steal things as you say kidnapped, Shay's like jaw drops and he's like, please tell me Pablo's OK, please. Yeah, he, he's a, we saved him. We, we returned him to, to K. He lets out a sigh of relief and he says, you have no idea how grateful I am for you. I have all sorts of goods for traders that we just got a shipment in and I'm probably not supposed to do this, but I can get you them at clearance prices, if that helps. I'm not very good at these kind of bartering things. That does help. What do you have? Um, he's got all sorts of stuff. It's true that he has a fresh shipment, and he gestures. He's like, anything anything in the glass cabinet, let me know, and I'll, I'll see what I can do for you. What are you looking for? Um, maybe just like a potion. Yeah, he's got plenty maybe. of potions. They come in different colors. Uh... Potion. <laughs> is this Grace or is this Elodie? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then, like interjects and he's like, so I'm looking for these shoes that are like black and gold and have the word battle on them. Are you saying this to Shay? Yeah. He, he's like, yeah, man, it's the best I got. Bottle's pretty cool. 
I might get those <laughs> shoes myself, actually. In response to Elodie slash Grace saying potion, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I, I can get you, I can get you three for the price of one. Great, I'll do that. Cool. He asks you for ten dollars. Ten dollars is great. Here you go. Great, and you get three potions. Add that to your inventory. Tell you what, I like you guys. You give me good business. I let you in on a little secret. He reaches under the desk where he's got the cabinet of trainer's goods and he pulls out a special looking Pokeball. It is light blue and has little like white features on the front of it. He says, they're starting this thing. I don't know where they got this idea, but next week they're going to have to start selling these four tree balls. I don't know what they do, but they look pretty cool. I'll get you guys one for the price of and he looks at his list and he says uh, for a great ball price. How's that? I'm interested. Yeah, I'm interested. Sounds good. OK, even though Cindy's poor, she can manage one four tree ball. He says, all right, I got to have two dozen for the display next week. And he like is thinking about it. He says, all right, yeah, I can I can definitely part with four. And if I'm letting them go at great ball price, which is about half off, that's going to be forty five. For the total? Oh, no, for each. Do we know what they do? Does he have any knowledge of the wear? Yeah, he has an idea. He's like, I'm not exactly sure how they work, but apparently they work better on certain kinds of Pokemon. I guess I'll take one. All right. Transaction complete. You have a four Mm -hmm. tree ball. Nice. I'll take one as well. Great. Mark that off. He takes one. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll take one too. Great. Do you say that that's steep out loud? Yeah. He says, hey, man, this is over half off. Half off still steep. (laughs) He he gives you a look (laughs) and he like doesn't even know how to respond to that. He's like, all right, man. Yeah, you do you. As you go to exit. You smell smoke and you look over towards the sunset and the sun, which was like laying off an orange hue, is now a red haze. Um, roll someone roll me a perception. I rolled a nat one. Yeah. I rolled a three. <laughs> My rolls are garbage three. tonight. Yeah, all of you can roll if you want. If you want, like just okay. I got a three plus one, so four. Okay. I just roll at this no point. idea what's good. It's like oh, that's a cool sunset. Look at that. that. Seventeen. So. Okay. What did Gimli get? Schmidt is too depressed 12. about not being able to get the 12? shoes that he doesn't notice yeah, anything or anyone else. Okay. Um, <laughs> Schmidt notices that something's up and he takes a big inhale and just starts coughing up smoke. Um, take oh, a God. take a D4 of damage. What? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, that one, bro. That's the least of your worries. Oh, come on. And I get a four. Welcome to critical failures. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Cindy can't tell what's going on. She's like, why does it smell weird? Gimli. Survival instincts kicking in. Gimli can yeah, tell that <laughs> like something's something's not quite right. Something's something's amiss here. Elodie can hear the voice of a woman screaming over on Route 120. <gasps> Y'all, somebody's screaming. <laughs> Oh, let's go. Everyone we, mops we, we, down. We help this person. Yeah. Okay. Um, Schmidt is lying on the ground coughing. <laughs> oh, man. Schmidt is passed She's out. so much pain. Schmidt, Schmidt took a lot of damage, guys. <laughs> so... Schmidt, come on, we gotta go! You, you run down onto Route 20 and you see the source of the smoke or it, what might be the source of the smoke, but it's pretty obscured where there should be a river that flows downstream. It is just completely a dry creek bed. As you were walking up Route 120, there were Pokemon that were like fish Pokemon that were still flopping around in the little creek. It is gone. It is dried up. There are just columns and columns of smoke coming from the riverbed. And you see a familiar figure who is lying on the ground holding her knee. And she's screaming. Sam is down there and appears to be injured. She's confronted with some figure that is completely covered in smoke. Uh, I'm going to yell out, Sam, are you okay? She turns around. She says, oh, I'm so glad you're here. I I really need your help. Please, please come down here right now. There's a growl that comes from the smoke. It is very, very scary. I I I think we should. 
Yeah. Yeah, we should go see. Yeah. Um, as you approach, this spoke is probably like 40 feet in front of Sam. She's clutching her knee. It looks like she tripped on a rock. Um, she's bleeding a little bit and she's grasping at a pokeball at her belt. And she's like, come on, come on. That's now is not the time. It's it's the strange ball that you don't recognize is not frostbite's ball. Um, mm-hmm. She's trying to encourage whatever's in there to come out, but they're not having it. What are you going to do here? Can we investigate it. Yeah. Roll me an investigation. Oh, baby. Nat really? 20. I'm on fire. I also got a nat 20. Nice. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So both of you why, remember why on the okay. <laughs> Don't worry why about on the, like pointless rolls on my critting and then like the <laughs> the one that causes me damage, I get a nat failure. Both of you remember that on your cruise over to Lily Cove on your vacation, you were flipping through like a travel guide. And neither of you were paying like that much attention, but you remember looking at a list of powerful trainers, right? And they were featured with their ace Pokemon. One of them said recently promoted elite four trainer Flannery and accompanied Mm. by her ace Torkoal. Now standing before you is hardly what you would call a Torkoal, but it looks not like anything else. Torkoals are generally pretty small in size. This thing stands like 15 feet. What normally lets off like white smoke is dark black and sooty. What is generally a calm face with closed <laughs> eyes is rage and open eyes that look very angry and very focused on Sam. It seems incredibly hot. Was Flannery at the uh, Lily Cove thing and got Pokemon stolen or something? I feel like I remember that, but I could be misremembering. I don't think Anyways. it was Flannery. It was Flannery no. no? Okay, never mind then. Y'all, this Torkoal looks angry. <laughs> <laughs> all right are we sure that, are we sure that's a torkoal <laughs> schmidt in between coughs is like i recommend we grab sam and bail yeah i'll pick her up <laughs> yeah i don't know if we can face this if i'm being honest yeah, I'm, I'm gonna scoop her up and then try to get out okay yeah strike check 16 okay yeah that's sufficient to pick up sam and you're starting to run mm-hmm. okay yeah we out of here okay yeah we out you're running the torkoal, or so it seems. Let's have a groan. It goes, and it can't move that fast. That's not what torkoal sounds. <laughs> but, but as it does, it, um, the jungle foliage that is on either side of the riverbank ignites, and it feels oh, a lot, a lot hotter now. Oh my god! Oh god! Um, and he very slowly chases after you, but it's not very fast. <laughs> is it your intention? <laughs> Scooby Doo see. <laughs> Is it what? What's your plan right now with Sam in Gimli's arms? I mean, I think we're just trying to head back to town, right? Get, let the forest burn. I mean, what? I mean, but if this thing needs? gets into town, that's true. And other people in town uh, can help us. I mean, we have to get people in town to help us stop the thing, right? Yes, but what if there this thing reaches the people that are already in town? The town is can't... made out of trees, friends. Yeah. Okay. But are we? Yeah, but what are we gonna do? Guide it away? Like y'all want to run distraction while I get the injured person out? Like what do you want to do? Schmidt says I'll serve as a distraction, and then he runs out with Patricia and Quacko to Ooh. initiate battle. He just said that like he needs to be battling with Patricia. Cool. So he's like, now's the time. What's the plan for the rest of you? You're gonna battle. I'll... You're not gonna run away, or like run to distract. No, 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 no. I'm straight up like run, run at him. Okay. So y'all can Anyways, get away. Cindy, you say whatever you Cindy will probably go fight it too. Because it my uh, Soli has flash fire, so it doesn't take damage from fire moves. Mm. So <laughs> Soli's already out ready to go. I'm trying to get Sam to safety and I'll be back. All right, Elodie? I'll stay and fight. Okay. It's initiative time. Mm-hmm. Cool. So Schmidt gets to go first to deal with this behemoth Torkoal. I'm going to use Patricia, and I'm going to have Patricia use Patricia's mystery move. Oh, okay, yeah, roll a nature. Uh, 13. Patricia starts, like, flapping very intently. Seems like it has something on the mind, something that is within her primal memory. Not perfectly, it seems like the smoke is a little distracting. Patricia focuses her energy, 
little distracted by the smoke, but she manages to get a bonus. Her next attack has advantage. Am I like in front of this thing already or? Yeah, you're within 30 feet of it. Uh, I just have Quacko get in a defensive position. Quacko will be the back line. I'm going to start like attacking with Patricia and then I'll be like, Quacko, draw your sword. And then Quacko's like ready for the sidelines. Great. Excellent. Um, Cindy. All right. So I'll probably send Soli in with a, a quick attack unless normal is not so good. <laughs> okay. Well, Against there's only fire. one way to find out. Okay. Okay. Roll to hit. Oh, no. I got a six. A six? Yeah. That does not hit. Sully dashes forward, goes to give this giant Torkoal a big old smack. Seems to just kind of glance off of Torkoal's shell. Um, it's really smoky, it's really hot, but Sully seems to be very confident and not too perturbed by these conditions. Elodie, show me what you got. Yeah, uh, I'm going to have Cabbage use Sweet Scent. So okay. it has to make a charisma save. Behemoth Torkoal manages to pass. Gets a 17. Ugh. Ugh. Yucky. Yeah, very gross. gross. It seems like it seems like all of this smoke just negates the scent. Torkoal just Ugh. can't smell it because it's already covered in smoke. Yeah. Probably should have thought about that. Now we're on to Behemoth Torkoal. This Torkoal eyes the competition in front of it, and it ain't scared. It's got some trees on fire. It's out for blood, apparently. It lowers its head, and out of its back comes plumes and plumes and plumes of more dense smoke than has been generally been coming out of its shell. It's going to request a constitution save from all the Pokemon. A two. 30, 20. Not saved. Quacko got a 19. Patricia rolled a six. Patricia, I'm so sorry. Every Pokemon that rolled higher than a 14 takes three damage. Three poison damage. Everyone who rolled lower than a 14 takes seven poison damage. And if you saved by less than five, you're poisoned. You have disadvantage on pretty much everything, and you're going to take two damage at the end of your turn. Okay, we're going to check in with Sam and Gimli. Sam okay. is gently crying. She's really upset. She's like, I can't use Frostbite. Frostbite's always there for me, but it's just too hot. I have cause with me, but he won't listen. He won't listen. You have a ladder to climb to get on the uh, walkway, or mm -hmm. you can charge through the foliage, the thick jungle foliage, to get to the Pokemon Center. I'm assuming that's where you're going for medical attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ladders, the ladder seems more like a dex where charging through the foliage is probably more my style. So Okay. Yeah. Give me a strength check. 18. Yeah. That's enough. You trudge your way through the foliage. You manage to get just like about where the gym is. It looks like there's one more. You're in a clearing in front of the gym. There's going to okay. be another patch of foliage to charge through, or you can take the ladder. But okay. since these oh, are like rounds two. of like six seconds or so, we're going to check yeah. in with Schmidt. Okay. Um, I think I'm just going to peck. Okay. Go for it. 13 to hit. Okay. That is not quite enough for Torkoal's oh steady God. shell. Um, Swablu flies in, and again, the smoke is just really overbearing, especially this poisonous smoke just didn't seem to set, sit well. Um, Patricia goes for the peck, just misses, just hits its cloudiness, and flies back towards Schmidt. This thing is 25 feet away instead of 30. Is he still, like, steadily moving? Yeah, he's, like, always walking, basically. Cindy, it's on you. Since Soli's kind of poisoned, I'll let her kind of chill off to the side a little bit so she doesn't get... I mean, she'll get more hurt, but, like... Mm -hmm not get more and more hurt yeah <laughs> i mean i could like pull her back in and send out cookie okay and use, can i is that my move sending out cookie and pulling in solely or can switching, i also use bubble switching is an action generally okay in like trainer battles i would not mind you doing this i think this is appropriate in this high stake situation so show, like as cookie's like leaving the pokeball it's like use bubble okay ah! <laughs> Oh, no. I got a four. four. Plus two. I got a six. Yeah. Cookie. That doesn't... <laughs> very confidently shoots out some bubbles. And before they reach Torkoal, they just evaporate in the heat. Any other things you'd like to do? No. Okay. Cry. <laughs> is that a bonus? Can I use cry as a bonus action? <laughs> yes, crying is a bonus action. You are more than welcome to. <laughs> Elodie, it's very on you. Distraught. Right. Um... If I were to use, like, 
aromatic mist or sweet scent to try and clear the smoke, but I just I feel like that wouldn't really work. <laughs> um you can always like it's a Pokemon battle, right? But it's always D D too. So if yeah. there's something that you want to do that's outside of the constraints of your moves, you can you can try it. You know, just let me know what it is. Use aromatic mist for our allies here. So that will add one D4 to any saving throw for one minute. Up next, it's the baddie. He leans back, takes a big inhale. The smoke seems to kind of like some of it tucks back into Torkoal's body. And then all at once, he expels a huge blast in to target all the Pokemon. The ah. humans are going to get a little hot, too, but you're not going to take damage from this. Everyone needs to make a dexterity save. Don't you have a D4 from Aromatic Let's Mist. Add the D4. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. I got another nat 20. What is the what save is this again? Dex. Patricia has a dirty 22. Okay. Um, Quacko has a 13. Anyone who got a 12 or higher is going to take 9 damage. 9 fire damage. Uh, uh, cookie is resistant. Yes. Correct. So, we can have that. Anyone who failed got less than, or 11 or lower, takes 18 fire damage. Um, Sam and Gimli. Are you going to charge through this jungle, or are you going to try and run over the top? Uh, jungle. Okay, roll me strength. 17. Yeah, you managed to do it again. As you're charging through the thick foliage, Sam looks at you and she says, I know what it is. I, I know what's doing it. I know how we can help this Torkoal. You're going to have to get back there. Down. Hold on, actually. Let's go to the pull aside. You want to meet me there in a second? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sam says... I know what's going on down on its belly. There's something there. It's a device. It's like a syringe. It's causing Torkoal to act up. You have to go there and get that syringe out of its belly. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you're running towards the Pokemon Center. Um, next turn, you will arrive. Okay. So, it's back at the top of the round. It is Schmidt. I guess I'll just go for Sing anyways. Okay. I'll put this thing to sleep. That's a check for me, right? What's that? Move DC eight plus charisma. Oh, it's pretty Patricia's low. Patricia's charisma is minus one. Oh no. Oh, no. Yeah. So um, seven, I guess. Yep. We'll see. And that's a four. <laughs> Torkoal. Yo. Is asleep now. Patricia, you beautiful songstress. I think this is our first time that we've encountered sleep. So let me just explain. Um, for the next three turns, three next three rounds of combat, Torkoal is going to be asleep. Um, can't do anything if, it, if you attack it with a saving throw it's at disadvantage um, when it is Torkoal's turn there's a chance that he will break out of sleep all right Cindy you got a sleeping behemoth in front of you it's still spewing smoke and it's still very hot but it is it was lulled to sleep we're gonna bubble again okay you have or it, yeah you have an advantage on this to hit okay well my first roll was an 18 and I have a plus two okay. so a dirty 20 you connect we'll see I got an 18 again, so. <laughs> okay, roll me the damage. I got a one. You got a one? Oh, but it's a water move. It Does is a water move. Anything? You are also in drought, so it is negated. Um, a whole. <laughs> one damage. <laughs> one damage. Hey, it's damage is damage. Um, you dealt some damage. Let's see if Torkoal wants to wake up. Answer is no. Elodie. Wait, does it, so does it try to make an attempt to wake up with every hit? Yes, every time it takes damage. Ah. And at the end of each of its turns. <laughs> I feel like that's way, uh, like, that's actually more balanced than the sleep mechanic in Pokemon. It also just makes more sense, yeah. Yeah. It's, like, a, it's a combination how, like, of RPGs Pokemon and D&D. Yeah, exactly. If you hit something that's sleeping, it's probably going to wake up, <laughs> you know? Can I use Tackle this time? Eleven. Unfortunately, okay. it's just so hazy and so hot. As I'm, is this um, is this cabbage or is this? This is cabbage. Yeah, yes. cabbage rolls forward or rolls, floats forward, goes for the tackle. Just like can't do it. It's too hot. It's too smoky. That poison damage is really scary for cabbage. Unfortunately, could we uh just check around see if maybe uh our friends our friend Gimli is on his way back yet? Just like you want to look around the corner. Yeah. You can roll for that. 11. 
you see gimli shaped holes in the jungle like he just charged through the foliage in fortress city you see no sign of him or sam okay but at least they're probably safe yeah. i'm gonna relay this fact to our friends okay we're going down to torkoal's turn um he's gonna try and wake up and he gets a crit he's awake he gets no action but he spends his action standing up and he looks at you and he goes and he spews out smoke and heat and he is stepping forward another five feet. He is 60 feet from Fortree City. Gimli, you arrive at the Pokemon Center. What do you say? She needs treatment now, but I have to rush back. There's something dangerous happening in the woods. OK, so you're just going to drop her off there and see what happens. Yeah. There OK, you go. yeah. Um, Sam is totally on board with this. Sam is like, thank you. I'll, I'll be fine. The nurse rushes forward. Um, this is not like a human center, but like they have bandages, so it'll be fine. They can put her in a sling, whatever she needs. And you're going to run on back. Mm-hmm. OK, you've carved out, carved out a path for yourself, so you don't really like need to make any rolls to get through the foliage. However, you can roll a d20 and see if you can dash since you are unburdened. So just roll a roll of athletics. Oh, uh, I'm, 25. <laughs> yeah. OK, so you clear the ground that you did carry in Sam twice as fast. Next round, you will be in combat. Nice. Schmidt, what are you doing? He's within 30 feet, right? You said like 25 of me. Mm-hmm. Well, 20 now because he just walked forward. I'm going to have Quacko take up a defensive position. And by that, I mean, just hold his sword at him. Or at the Torkoal. Okay. And then I'm going to have Patricia sing again. OK. That seven DC, will it work twice in a row? Will it work? Come on, Patricia, you beautiful songstress. Oh, he got a one. <laughs> what? Yes. yes. That's insane. Let's go, Patricia. That's so dumb. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're broken. Um, what is there? What does the song Steve sound like? Sam, can can you describe it? It's the most beautiful melody you've ever heard in your life. Actually, no, Patricia singing Motley Crue. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Patricia sings That's not Patricia the song. <laughs> Patricia sings the Swablu version of Motley Curry when Torkoal falls asleep again. The <laughs> the smoke and heat seems to quiet down a little bit, but it's still blazing hot. Um nicely done. Sandy, what are you doing? Let's go for another bubble. Oh no. What? We got six. Yeah, it's so six. hot. It's crazy. Even when Torkoal's <laughs> sleeping. Cookie shoots out some bubbles very confidently this time, but they just evaporate before they make contact. Um, Gimli, panting, runs uh, up to the party. Guys, there's something really important. This giant torkoal, it's got a little thing on its belly. We gotta get it off. It's making it big. Like flip it like a turtle. Flip it like a turtle. So I, I can't see it. I guess I could roll a perception to see if I could see it. But I'd like to see what's protruding. Because I was like, let's go for the bowl. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm aiming it for mm-hmm. to try to pull it off. So I guess I'll have to try to go for a perception to see if we could see underneath the Torkoal. Roll it. Five. Five. The way <laughs> the Torkoal is sleeping, it's like its legs, like it was standing, and then it just, its legs splayed out. So mm-hmm. it's just on its belly. You can't see anything down there. Okay. Elodie. Okay. All right. How the frick are we going to flip this thing over? Everybody um, lift. It's <laughs> super hot, though. I got Baker arms. I'm ready to go. Baker arms. That's the new ad- ability introduced in 5e. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Obviously. Baker arms. See, I don't know. There's the things like I'm like, I don't know if I should try or if this is like a stretch. But I was thinking of like trying to use like sweet scent or something to like lull it in its sleep. Um, is that like a stretch? I'm going to send you something. OK. It's a it's a treat. Let's say it's a result of your time at the Rite of Learning. How's that? Oh, my gosh. Oh, this is great. All right. Oh, we're definitely using this. Okay, so this is a bonus action. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do some, some sense-spiration. Great. Sense-spiration. <laughs> sense-spiration. I think we're going to give this to Trevor. The rock and roll off since he's like a rock type. Okay. To make this clear, um, this is a D6 of inspiration that you can use within the next 10 minutes. You can add a D6 to any of your rolls. After the roll. 
right? But it could be after the like roll, but it has to be before it's declared. Before so you could say the number, then really quickly say, I want inspiration. And with the bulk of my turn, we're going to go for... Is the minute up on the aromatic mist? I doubt it, right? No, it's these not. These are seconds. Yeah, right, these I are think. six second rounds. I guess we'll just go for like a, a tackle towards one of its like legs, I guess. Okay. Is this like an attack or is this like you're trying to move it? Yeah, trying to like move its its leg out of the way. Okay. I guess. Um, You don't have to roll a tackle. You can roll me based on how you want to describe it. A strength or dexterity. Probably more of a dexterity. Okay. Okay, that was a 10. Unfortunately, the, the torquil leg is just too big, too heavy, too hot to be reckoned with at this moment. And Torkoal's going to see if it wakes up. And it does. Torkoal stands up, lets out a groan, has had enough with these shenanigans, and steps five feet closer. 55 feet until Fortree City. So the thing on its belly needs to be destroyed? Or it's like a button? There's something. If I investigate this, would that be my action for the turn? Nope. That's a dirty 22. So you can see in the center of Torkoal's belly, there is some sort of like black tube sticking out. It's coming at like a diagonal angle. It seems like it might have like gotten squished that way when it slept on its belly. Um, and it seems to have some sort of insignia or marking on it. OK, have I weaned that this is like a like a switch or something or um, not quite? You can tell can that destroyed? part of it is sticking out and then part of it is inside of Torkoal's belly. What if I had Quacko like try to slide under there and then hit the thing out of its belly with that, his sword? That sounds epic. You should try it. Okay. Oh, oh, oh Quacko, your monster. That's also a dirty twenty-two. Dirty twenty-two. What's the um natural roll? Nineteen. You know, with your leak, that means it's a crit, right? Oh, that is a crit. Um, yo. You want to describe this that. epic maneuver to remove this device from Torkoal's belly? Quacko does like a like a like a like a Mega Man slide, you know, like he gets like a running start and then he like slides on his 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 feet down there and he has like the leak in hand and then he just like smacks the the belly of the torpal and then whatever thing but just pops out. All right. Yeah, you you all witness something super cool that you would expect to see from like the leader of a team. It is (laughs) awesome. Um, you swear that you still hear bits of the song that Patricia was singing just earlier as like a little anthem for Quacko. I imagine Patricia's like still humming it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So as Farfetch slides out on from the other side of the Torkoal, um, this black device is removed from its belly. Um, its eyes kind of roll into the back of its head and it collapses onto its size. As it does that, it seems like a bunch of energy is just streaming out into the air from Torkoal's body, from its face, from the holes on its shell, and it decreases in size. It shrinks and it shrinks, and it becomes more or less the size of a normal Torkoal. It is conked. It's knocked out. The heat in the surrounding area dissipates. The smoke blows away in the wind. It is still hot. It's still parched, but there's no longer a source of heat. As the sun has set even more during this battle, about another hour later, it's actually starting to feel kind of chilly, and you can see clouds rolling in from the north. Can we take it to the Pokemon Center to make it feel better? Can I pick it up and bring it to the Poke Center? You can do whatever you want. Let me know what you want to do. You do whatever you want. I'm going to scoop it. You're going (laughs) to scoop it? bring it back. Yeah, Yeah, it's still very warm. Roll to pick it up. Keep in mind, though. You could probably bring it to the Weather Institute and make bank. Right, but he he looks like nice and Well, right now, we're getting it to the Pokemon Center. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, of course. Of course. Is that device still on the ground, or did it? It's on the ground. It's there. We should I would bring like that to too. investigate that device. Roll me an investigation. That's Nat one. Nat one. No, no. You have no Sh- idea. It's like yeah. feeling himself <laughs> of like, like, <laughs> like Quacko's like really cool, and he's like, yes, yes, Schmidt Pack, best team. Great. He's just like feeling himself. I I rolled the strength for to pick up the Torkoal to carry it, and I got twenty four. So I'm yeah, you're fine. <laughs> you you can honestly carry it on your shoulder. Yeah. So with the with the dad hat holding the torkoal like a boss. Right. That's right. Cindy's just like, I vote we name our team the Quacko Pack. The Quacko Pack. The Quacko Pack. Instead of the Schmidt Pack because Quacko is just Quacko-paco. insane. <laughs> the Quacko Pack. <laughs> you all march back there carrying the torkoal. The night is feeling much colder than it was before. 
Um, you notice that Quacko is holding a leak as well as the strange device that was on the ground. You walk in the Pokemon hey. Center. You see Sam. She's got a little brace on her leg. She's wearing like a boot. Um, and she's been given a crutch and she walks and she says, you're OK, you're OK. How did it go? Well, we stopped him. <laughs> Points at the thing over my shoulder. <laughs> hey, this guy needs a good uh, fixer up. Let me know when he wakes up. <laughs> uh, I think we all need a little fixer up. Fixer, yeah. yeah. Patricia yeah, is um, bloodied. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um, Nurse Patricia Joy. was such a trooper that game. Nurse Joy says, oh, great. I will take your Pokemon. And she collects all your Pokemon. Farfetch hands you the device because it, it shouldn't be healed. It shouldn't take that in with it. Um, would you like to roll okay. again on it? Or I'll offer it to someone else to look at and be like, can you tell what this thing is? Yeah. I'll take a look at it. Oh, oh. I just rolled a 16. <laughs> So <laughs> let's get Elodie's roll too, just because. Okay, okay. No, okay. it's okay. No, I, I rolled in that one. <laughs> oh, okay. Glitz and I are connected tonight, I guess. Do you want to describe your net one, like before Schmidt takes a look at it? Like what? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna uh, look at it and be like, "Wow, that's um, that's a thing for sure." It's definitely it. For sure. Look at that thing. That's what it is. Yeah. Neat. <laughs> um, that's nice. wow. Schmidt. It's a dirty 20 total. Yeah. By the way, you yeah. take you take a look at this thing. It is. It's an interesting device. It there's a big, thick, like needle on one side. It's clearly a syringe. And then the part where there would be a vial or something is like an obsidian black container. There are three letters in yellow text printed on the side. They are N R G. Sam looks at the group. And she says, it's been a big day. We should probably get some rest. And unless there's anything you want to say or check, that's where we'll call the session. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Dunsparce and Drampop. If you're enjoying the series, be sure to follow or subscribe and check out the links in the description or by visiting linktree slash Dunsparce. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Dunsparce. This podcast was heavily inspired by Boarding Party's Pokemon D&D podcast on YouTube, so if you enjoy this content, you should absolutely go check them out as well. The group and I are discussing membership options via Patreon, where you could support the podcast and unlock special rewards, such as post-show discussions, insight into running the game, NPC naming opportunities, and more. Let us know what you'd like to see as a potential patron. We'll see you next Tuesday. What kind of battle skills would you like this Elodie? No, Elodie. <laughs> what kind of battle skills would you like I this? I get the battle skills? Yeah, no, I mean, maybe. He's like, would you like to train? And he gestures over to like a, a deadlift bench. <laughs> He's like, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't do that. <laughs>